This is Ralph Ring, a World War, I mean, a Korean War veteran. He works on bio energy from the vacuum from what Tesla worked on. Now he's explaining what we are in, and this is correct. In fact, this is the only person that I know of that, that has seen what I saw with my brother in 1973. The, the system or God or the universe or whatever controlled this deal show him the same thing it did to me. And he explained what this life is, what we are in. Listen to him very careful because you're not gonna find this explanation from anyone else. Treating the raccoons to, to keep our minds off. We were so anxious to get going on the project. And uh, they, we got a phone call and they said, we've got you a place. It's just down the hill from where you're at on the other side in Napa Valley or Hesperia, California, near Victorville. It's coincidentally because all these people moved on feelings and spirit, if you will. Oh. George Van Tassel, 1956. I'm glad you mentioned Van Tassel. I forgot. I had ordered from, from Europe uh, Tesla's big book, and it didn't get to me. And I was going through all the uh, patents and everything in the big book. And <clears throat> when this thing happened, uh, with my wife kicking these guys out and everything, I, I got a little uh, apprehensive. And I decided, I knew of Van Tassel, and I knew a little bit about his background. And I didn't, this was before I met Carl. And so I took a trip, I got in my car, and because I, I was going to try and meet people that... Would be more receptive. Do, yeah, more receptive. And I took this Bible down to Giant Rock, Joshua Tree, California, and met with Van Tassel. And we had a nice talk, and I said, you know, I was supposed to give you this. You know, I, I, I can't, I, I'm, I'm out of this phase of this. I don't know where I'm going or what I'm going to do, but this is it. And I gave it to him, and I remember it was getting late that afternoon, or evening, and I went out and laid on a, on a hillside, and uh, I looked up in the sky, and I saw hundreds, if not thousands, of Whatever they were, UFOs, spaceships, different various lights, shapes. Or, really? Yeah, they're like green lights or whatever. I don't know. There were hundreds and hundreds. They were coming over and they'd stop and come down and go up and around. And I thought, oh my God, this is this is really you know this is really. And what I, I said, what is this for? And what I got was because you did what you did. And I, wow, this is, I was really... So it was like a thank you demonstration yeah. of a sort. Right. Wow. And I just... That's amazing. You know, I, I chilled all over. Like, if you oh, build it, is... we will come. That's what I saw, but in a different oh, deal. So in Caracas, Venezuela. Then I got back and then Listen we to set up the meeting with Carr. And then we got down into the laboratory down in, uh, in Hesperia, in, uh, in uh, Apple Valley. And uh, he worked on anti gravity. He started setting up shop. We had a little Dr. machine Park. shop set up, and we had uh, you know all kinds of stuff to, to do things with. But we'd had a couple of models that, that they brought with them that were uh, uh, semi operational. So we, the first experiment that I saw that just knocked my socks off was we set it up on on one of the workbenches and attached. Uh, uh, not electricity, but uh, sound waves, if you will, or uh, maybe it was, I think they had a, I'm not sure. Anyway, <clears throat> this was a, a small uh, model about uh, what, uh, two feet in diameter, two or three feet in diameter. And uh, they said, well, take a look at this. So they fired it up. Hardly any noise, just a hum, you know, vibratory hum, and uh, 
it was made out of aluminum, and I touched the surface of it, and it felt good, but I could feel the, the vibrations. And so they kept increasing the, the, uh, the amplitude. energy, and uh, then there was this feeling that it, geez, it felt really like somebody had opened a door and a cool breeze was coming through. It felt really good. And at that time, I went to touch it again, and it was like jello. It was getting soft. It was getting really, really soft. Like I could put my fingers through it. Better than jello, because like I, it didn't stick or anything. Out. I put my hand in and pulled it out. Oh my like goodness. That. And what did it feel like when your hand was well, inside of the gelatinous material? Did you feel any... It was the same tingling that we were all feeling in the, in this room. That you know, we had accelerated our 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 efforts. Time. It was like what it was doing, we were doing. Oh, it was I doing, see. It was yes. a, it so was you a were you were sort of speeding up to, to kind of like in sympathy to to yes. those vibrations. Exactly. exactly. But resonance that you talked about. Exactly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, car after the experiment. Yeah, harmonic. Car. Uh, the way he, he briefed us on things was just, we'd sit down and have a cup of coffee, you know, and it just, but he'd come out with this wonderful stuff that, you know, just about the laws of nature and how they are, that is our whole essence. And if we ignore it, we're in trouble. You've got to understand these laws and how they work for anything. If you want a comfortable life, a good life, a happy life, and uh, especially if you want to get anywhere in technology, you can't use brute force. And I told him about advanced kinetics and everything, and he kind of laughed and he said, no. He said that we, uh, he told me a lot, he worked with Tesla, and he'd known, you know, uh, him for a while and worked with him. And uh, I guess you, by now you already know about the, the story of Tesla going to J.P. Morgan and... Uh, when he showed the wireless uh, uh, tower how to transmit power wirelessly. Uh, yeah. He says it's a real good idea, but how are we going to stick a meter on it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they measure that. So we are in control. It's really astounding. And, and he definitely uh, no, said the message. No, we're not. No more. He said, if we go your way, Tesla, we'll have no more copper mills, no more lumber, we, you know, these trees for telephone poles and, and wire. And he said, well, that's the idea. You can stick a, a pole in the ground 30 feet and 30 feet, and we can, I'll show you. We can get electricity anywhere. Take it's it all down. around us. We're living 30 in it. feet down, 30 feet and, up. Uh, Morgan said, no, no way. And limit the energy. Uh, J.P. Morgan, from what I understand, was also one of the first, uh, one of the pioneers in the military industrial complex. He was the man. And uh, soon afterward, he pretty much picked up the backbone to the Washington and, and said, hey, we got this loose cannon on our hands. and." Uh, the implications of the uh, conversations uh, pretty much uh, took care of uh, burying Tesla from then forth. And uh, I guess from what I understand from reading some they, of the journals, uh, they gathered up all this. They destroyed Tesla. Right, uh, right there, so there because of that. And then uh, he, I guess uh, they put him up in a hotel in Waldorf Astoria yeah. and gave him a government statement and the, and the uh, agents were always on the crawl prowling everywhere, interrupting his conversations, and uh, pretty mm -hmm. much uh, filtering out any, any connection with the outside world to him. And the car mentioned what happened to Tesla. Did he talk to you guys about that? Tesla became discouraged because of the, you know, the lack of interest in what, you know, the, I mean, he'd take them a new idea or bring, them, bring out a new idea and, and show them the simplicity. There's nothing to it. Right. And they'd say, well, there's no money in it. Forget yeah. it. Moving parts. I mean, everything he'd bring up, you know. Uh, so it was Carr's point of view that the Tesla was uh, discouraged, but did Carr sort of relate his being hounded by, you know, the military or being, you know, shadowed and so on Tesla. as being this, what happened to Carr as being the same thing that ha ha happened yeah. to Tesla? Yeah. In other words, did he talk about that at all, Carr, before well, that? Well, I guess... I don't know. I, you know, Carr didn't talk too much about the the threats or anything that Tesla had. You know, but uh, I was under the impression, talking to Carr, that there were many, many uh, things happening that were trying to keep Tesla under wraps, trying to keep him quiet. Uh -huh. And uh, 
Tesla had told him at one time, he says, you know, I may never make it in this generation to get these ideas out. Right. This is all just free energy. Free is, you know, you got four elements, you know, the sun, the, the, the water, the, the earth, and, and the air. Right. They're all free. Right. They have been forever and they always will be. And we're not using them. We're, we're inventing ways to put meters on them and sell them. They even are selling air at one time and now they're selling water. And, and you know, Who would have thought? Hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so Tesla told him, all this that I'm sharing with you, and he, he thought oh, the car was brilliant. He thought, that, you know, he was grasping everything that Tesla was selling him because the car had been into to, uh, to uh, nature for, for years himself. He said, it, if I don't make it, or when I don't make it, he said, I probably won't make it. You take it and pass it on. And if you don't make it, pass it on. But this is, it's, it's going to get worse because they've already challenged nature. The man Correct. way back there had challenged nature. You're and what conflict. goes around comes around, natural law. Correct. It will come back on them. Mm -hmm. Basically, Carr did exactly what Tesla asked him to do. Yes. He took it, he took it forward. Yeah. In a sense, you are taking forward what Carr, yeah. what Carr, I mean, you, you seem to be the person, you know, that, that's like a descendant of Carr in that line. Am I right? Yeah. Yeah, I would say so. I mean, and the, it's so amazing to me that you're so unknown. Well, I, <laughs> there was, yeah. there was many reasons for that. Um, because uh, we would like to actually know why you're so unknown, you know what okay, I mean? Okay, I will tell you. They were all hit and miss, but Carr was always on, and I'd, I'd stay up all night. We'd, we'd be looking at the stars and talk all night, and never need any sleep. I mean, I'd go to work <laughs> the next day and just feel pumped up all the time talking to this guy. I mean, he would just, wow. And I said, you know, don't, you know, don't worry, we're going to get this thing going here. And um, he said, they, well, they're, they're closing in. They know he's in California now. They, they, and we were oh. on some of our experiments on some of the crafts. And we operated different principles. And some of them would create a, a, a corona around the outside of the... Mm -hmm. we, we'd operate these little... The dielectric uh, principles right. of, of uh, the ionization process. And so, even though it was daylight sometimes, You'd, you'd see these things, and the people in the valley were, were, were uh, that was the year of flying saucers and stuff, so they thought, oh my God, this place has got flying saucers around here and stuff. Well, that and the fact that the powers that were trying to reduce Carr's activities was following him, trying to find him. And so he said, well, we, we're just going to have to keep working on this. Carr had made arrangements. And I went with him to meet with a representative of General Motors car company. And that, I think it was either Riverside or, I think it was Riverside. We, the guy who com committed to meet with Carr, because Carr told him a few things that, that interested him. And uh, so I went with him, and Repulti was there, <clears throat> and I think Awful was there. And uh, in a very uh, precise way, Carr said, you know, we can levitate these machines. Ah, we you know, get off the earth, we're killing a lot of animals, we're destroying the, exactly. the plant life. He says, you know, within a, within, within a year we'll have these things going. One year. You know, and <clears throat> we can start with the automobile, that's obsolete. We can get these things going. And then the homes, and which is my interest. I've always wanted, you know, you can not? move like the entire neighborhood out of the path of a tornado or hurricane. You know, countries. Who knows the end of it? But uh, God, this guy man. got real, real uh, aggressive and said, you know, you put them up there, car, and we'll shoot them down. That was his words. You put them up and we'll shoot them down. Wow. And I was flabbergasted, like, well, why? What? What? Mm -hmm. He says, well, you're, 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 you're advocating an energy field that, that, uh, Obsolete, poison, that there's no money involved. You can't, you know. We have no means of controlling it. This is exactly, right? this will end all of that. Because you're pulling energy out of the air, which is all around us, and using that to, 
to transport or teleport or whatever. And so, so he.